Welcome to Take Another Look, a public affairs show bringing you current events, news, and information you can use. On today's show, we're talking about barriers to re-entry for those who have been incarcerated. Our guests use the term returning citizens to describe those with a desire to work as productive members of society. They are often very intelligent and very skilled. They just need a business owner or a company to give them a chance. Dr. Gail Frazier is a strong advocate for returning citizens with two decades of experience working on their behalf. She is the president of the Construction Management Consortium and is the National Dean for the United States Minority Contractors Association Entrepreneurship Training Program. Also with us is Stephen K. Merritt, president and CEO of the Service Rider Academy of America, which helps car dealerships nationally in their efforts to identify individuals who would find success in the automobile service and parts industry. Welcome to this edition of Take Another Look. Dr. Frazier, we'd like to start with you. Sure. Many times when people talk about people who have been in jail, they really refer to them as second-class citizens, third-class citizens, and they're treated as such when they attempt to enter the workforce. Right. Tell us a little bit about your experience and why you think that's wrong. Well, for one thing, uh, returning citizens, as we call them, that's the appropriate name, they've already done their time when they were incarcerated, imprisoned. So it's important for us to understand that these individuals are returning back to society. And so, of course, it would be most impactful and beneficial for us to make sure that they have things in place for them to be successful because they are heads of households, they do have children, and we need to be more responsible in assisting them. Now, in your experience, uh, do you find that there are many people, once they get out of prison, they're not interested in going back to prison. They really do want to make an honest wage, earn a living, take well, care of their children, take care of their families. Because I know, you know, sometimes when you're talking about this kind of thing, people make it like, oh, this person's a career criminal. He keeps going back, going back. Course. But sometimes the reason why they're going back to that life of crime is because they're not finding exactly. or not able to exactly. get opportunities. Happen. And that is a critical thing because many of them are unable to do so. And the fact that many of the laws and everything have been put in place to make sure that they're not successful uh, this causes them the recidivism rate to be much higher because when you can't find anything, naturally you're going to go back to the life that you knew. And so the point is, is that if we as, as citizens realize the need for them to become successful, then we need to do our part in making sure that that happens. Okay. And Mr. Merritt, of course, you have a kind of a, a training or an incubator system for executives. Uh, it sounds like to me, uh, sales staff and executives, individuals who are interested in uh, becoming productive members of society. Tell us a little bit about uh, the, the Service Writer Academy. Absolutely. There's a huge demand, as we all know, the importance of great customer service. And what I do is I've been working with dealerships now for 19 years, have a phenomenal reputation, impeccable reputation in the automotive industry. And literally, if I say, I need you to interview with this person, people just say, what time? Wonderful. And obviously that takes time to build that type of trust and credibility with these individuals, but the service and parts new dealership industry is huge and is growing. Cars aren't going anywhere, people aren't going anywhere, and people are going to continue to maintain and repair their vehicles, and the industry alone of service and parts is going to be up 6.9% within the next few years. And we need great individuals that actually care about other people to talk to others about maintaining their cars and their repairs because people are keeping their cars even longer. And as we all have transportation, right. we think that they're actually making cars better, and they're not. That's There's true. more recalls <laughs> than ever, and we need people to talk to customers and talk them through this and keep them happy in their transportation. So with my academy, that's exactly what we do. We find the right individuals that, have the, that possess the right characteristics that want to deal with people and that want to be professional. And this is an industry that averages over 50,361 a year that does not require a college degree. It requires mm -hmm. the right person 
the right work ethic and the ability to want to deal with people and have the right characteristics is huge. And you've been successful at placing uh, individuals who were formerly incarcerated? You know, some dealerships, they do have standards in regards to their background check. What I've found is that if you're honest and you say exactly what happened, because they understand that people make mistakes, yes. you disclose it up front, mm -hmm. they have no problem with working with these individuals. So, yes, I have absolutely have placed individuals that have had some issues with their, their background. I'm a firm believer that everybody deserves a second chance. And I like to find those dealers and work with those dealers that will accept these type of individuals. And they, they definitely are out there. Yes. Now, sometimes will they start as a service writer? Could they start in a different position and work their way up? Absolutely. But there's, there's a way. Now, Dr. Frazier, these barriers, uh, sometimes there's lack of education. Uh, sometimes there's substance abuse problems. Yes. Uh, sometimes there's uh, you know, you know, other issues that kind of crop up when it comes time for someone to be released. And, sure. Uh, you know, they, they're re-entry into society, so to speak. How does your organization, how do you and how does your organization deal with that? Well, the thing is, is one thing that's really uh, important is that we have to work collaboratively. It's not an individual organization. When there is a will to do something, then we always find a way to do it. And so the thing is, is that I surround myself with like-minded individuals, organizations and such like that have the same vision and goal as far as making sure that individuals are assisting them in the process. Now, is everyone successful? I would not say everyone is successful. And it's naturally, you know, you won't have 100%. Uh, but a vast majority of individuals are successful when we have that holistic African concept where it says it takes a village to raise a child. Well, that's the same mindset that we have to have when we're trying to help individuals transition from prison to uh, back into society. So what are your words of advice if someone is looking at this right now, perhaps they have a family member that sure. is um, you know, about to make their re-entry? Uh, what words of advice would you give them? Or are there some pointers that you can give them, areas where you can say, right now, start doing this, do that? Because I'm sure, you know, identification is an issue. Of There's course, so many yes. different things that uh, they're dealing with once they come out. Just let us know a little bit yes, about what you do as far as providing service and advice. Well, it's, of course, you're absolutely right. Uh, there are wonderful programs that are presently out there. I'll say one in particular, the Men and Women in Prison Ministries, uh, Reverend Doris Green, has a phenomenal uh, ministry that she uh, provides. They provide uh, information on expungement, uh, all the necessary resources where you can get your uh, identification, you know, all of the wonderful things that they need. In addition, there are other individuals out here who have ministries and, 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 and different organizations that have already come together and we're collectively and collaboratively working together to make sure that they have it. But as far as uh, advice, I would just say don't give up. That's one key. Absolutely. Don't give up because more and more companies are now seeing the need that re returning citizens are needed. You know, they're necessary. You need to hire them. You can work with them. And many of them are starting to have successful stories. And, uh, you know, I could go on and on about that. But that's one thing, never to give up hope. And if you surround yourself with individuals who are like-minded in terms of trying to help, you'll be successful. So, Mr. Merritt, of course, it's clear we know that Dr. Frazier has experience in this area. How did you end up linking up with her uh, <laughs> you know, being involved in, in this outreach effort? We met at a U.S. Minority Contractors meeting. We did. And someone invited me there, and it was a great opportunity to meet all the mayors of the South Suburban area. I was born and raised in Harvey, Illinois. Went to school right here in Dalton and Thorn Ridge. And definitely my academy is in Olympia Field. So born and raised in, in the South Suburbs. Right. So it was an honor to, to meet the different mayors there. To meet Ms. Fraser has been an absolute blessing for Thank sure. You. And like she said, I try to surround myself with like-minded individuals. And I've always been the type of a person that it's the right thing to look out for other people. Exactly. And with returning citizens, we someone has to give these individuals a chance. Exactly. And I think, especially in the past, by that one box on an application, right? They see that and no chance. Not even exactly. not even an interview. Not and even how an how interview. fair is that? These guys and in, these individuals, exactly. They want a second chance, and I'm sure they'll work hard for it. One thing's for sure: they they need our assistance. They, they need. Career training. 
for sure. Exactly. And we're, we're here to provide that we have the, the resources. Outstanding. Now, of course, Dr. Frazier, we know that you're very involved all over the Chicagoland area with these types of workshops. Sure. And uh, you're partnered with the Village of Dalton and Mayor Riley Rogers uh, for a returning citizens forum yes. that is going to actually uh, bring individuals this is uh, to the Village Hall so that they can identify yes. some of these yes. services and connect with some of exactly. these companies and individuals who have these services. So tell us a little bit about what you hope to accomplish. Well, that's an excellent uh, question. Certainly, we want to accomplish the fact that many of the ones who come, that they will definitely connect with those resources that they need. In addition to that, know that people are genuinely concerned. One of the problems that we have is that when they come out, it's as if they're uh, treated as dirt. You know, and, and the humanity has, has totally been stripped. Yes, we know people have committed crimes and things like that. But, you know, just like uh, Mr. Merritt was saying, we should at least extend that hand to help. And so the symposium or the forum, as you called it, is going to bring uh, the various companies together, the organizations, the resources, so that at least they will know the ones who are either out looking for work or have been struggling. At least they will know that there are some things out here that's already in place. And if they're willing to take those necessary steps, then they will receive the good out of the whole event. So, Mr. Merritt, if someone wants to get active with your organization or perhaps use some of the services or utilize some of the services that you provide in recovery, how can they contact you? The best way to contact us is our website, and that's mm -hmm. www.swaoa.com. Okay. And Dr. Frazier, uh, how does someone get in touch with you and... I mean, you're like the one-stop shop, the resource. Well, I wouldn't you know, say that, no, but I'm definitely involved in it. Uh, but they can reach me at my email, Gail Frazier. Gail is G-A-L-E. Frazier is F-R-A-Z-I-E-R at C is in cookie, S is in Sam dot com. And so they can reach me there, and I will certainly get back with them. Well, thank you so much for tuning in to thank this you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm here with Dr. Gail Frazier and Mr. Stephen Merritt. They're helping us take another look at reentry and returning citizens.